I'm Jim Gillis. I'm with uh, Hollywood Times, and I usually work with Valerie Milano, but she's out at some other film event. So I am your lone guy today. That and, is all good with me. And I have seen your film and looked at it actually twice, so I kind of know it pretty well. And um, so I guess my first question to you is the obvious one. Mm. What motivated you to make this film? Because it's kind of a lifelong interest of yours, right? Uh, yeah, it would be... Uh, Obsession be is more like it. <laughs> I, you know, it's uh, it's interesting. There's a lot of fandom, uh, obviously, in the documentary. I mean, but what made me want to make the movie is, you know, I was coming out of film school and I wanted to tell a story that only I could tell. And as far as I knew, I was the only person that, that had this extremely specific experience with chasing Amy in the exact same way that I had had it. And, you know, whenever I had talked about chasing Amy being my favorite movie, um, people would always ask me a lot of questions and, you know, it'd be this like, you know, not controversial, but there'd be a lot of intrigue around it. And, mm -hmm. you know, I would always agree with, you know, the conversations that were being had. And I thought it would be an interesting topic for a movie, but I really just wanted to tell a story that that only I could tell. Um, and so it all started there and I started to lean into, you know, uh, the cultural conversations that we're having, um, mm -hmm. not just 1997, but in the present day. Right. And, you know, really thinking about how to contextualize the movie. And then as time went on, it became a more personal endeavor in a way that I just could have never anticipated. And, uh, you know, despite it not being the movie that I had set out to make, I'm so grateful that this ended up being the movie that we made because, you know, it is a uniquely me film now. And I and I totally accomplished what I wanted, which was a story that only I could tell. Because it's your story. And in many ways, yeah. it's more your story than it is the story of Chasing Amy, although that's the starting point. 100%. And, um, and it's interesting how you slowly were able to get in touch with different people along the way. The most difficult person being Joey, who you mm. put in at the end of the film because you weren't sure if that interview would ever happen, right? Well, you know, Joey was actually one of the first people to agree. Uh, oh, to, really? to, but she was the last person I interviewed in that sequence of people. Right. Um, so uh, I had interviewed Guinevere first, Kevin second, and uh, Joey last, but Kevin, uh, Kevin and Jason Lee were the hardest gets at a certain point. Oh, really? Um, but most people, you know, uh, people would advocate for me and and our filmmaking team to be able to get in touch with people, and I'm and I'm so thankful for the people who advocated for us. But I'm also so thankful for everybody who trusted us with their story um, mm -hmm. and their commentary because that is not a responsibility that I take lightly. Well, yes, and you got a lot of information out of the filmmaker <laughs> that I didn't expect you'd be able to pull out of him. You know, he, I, don't, I know him a little bit, and I, I, he's not easy to get conversation with, but you managed to get him to warm up to you and actually support your project to the point where he was fascinated with it and actually became part of it. And so that, that to me is exciting. And that, I, did, I, did you anticipate that? Uh, I, I had never planned for a version of the movie where we didn't have Kevin involved. And, and uh -huh. with me, he's always been kind and generous. And the fact that he gave us this much time um, yeah. out of his life, like to, to just talk to us. And, you know, he's been so supportive since the movie came out, you know, saying very kind things on Twitter, you know, directing people to go see the movie at Tribeca. Like it is incredibly meaningful for the guy who made you want to make movies uh, to be that supportive, both, you know, on camera and off. So, um, you know, I'm forever grateful. Um, but I, I, I was betting on the fact that he would say yes to being interviewed, you know, once he, once he saw the Ted talk and, um, yeah. I'm so grateful for it. Well, and you have a little bit of the Ted talk in there, a brief moment of it, but yes, I mean, I, and I haven't actually seen that to be, I'll have to go dig it out somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it, because that was your point of departure, I guess. Yeah, and everything flowed from there. I'm very interested also in the fact that you have a love story in there, a love story that began at a very young age, just 17. And uh, that is unusual to me. I mean, because so often films are not like that. Yours is, yours is like a very romantic story. And Riley's an amazing person, as you all already know. <laughs> so, and it's partly her story. Mm -hmm. So, um, you want to say something about that, maybe? 
Yeah, I mean, it is unusual. I mean, I'm thinking, so this year will be, uh, next weekend will be our third wedding anniversary and uh, we'll be together nine years in August. Oh, wow. And um, that's pretty unusual for people as, as young as we are. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I love about, you know, our love story, both on screen and off, is that it starts from a place of genuine friendship where we just liked being with each other. We just like talking to each other. Um, and, you know, I, I don't claim to be an expert on much, but I, I, you know, I think what really works about our relationship is that, you know, we do have this, this uh, place of genuine friendship and this spontaneity and this fun that I think she really brings to it. You know, she's, she's helped me lighten up a lot over the years and uh, we just like spending time together and we make a point to continue to do that and to just hang out with each other and to um, try to grow in the same direction, even when things are uncertain or scary. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm the luckiest dude in the world. You see it on film, you know, everything that you see, in there is uh, other than her claiming that I can't uh, I can't do anything other than fold socks, which is a total lie. I just want to put that on the record that I am the one who folds and puts away all the laundry. I just want to put that out there, clear okay. it up. Well, you figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have one of those washing machines that like eats a sock out of each pair. Then <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I find them, I pair them all up, um, and I put away the rest of the clothes. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, that's just that's just fun stuff. I think one of the things that's really reassuring about your film for younger viewers, especially, is that you can have a relationship and it can work. And I think that's a huge message to so many young people who don't think that's possible, regardless of where they're coming from. And they may not be coming from as complicated a background if you had to go through, but still, I think the message of hope is very significant. And uh, I want to I wanted to say that up front, because I think that is probably why people should see the movie, among other things. I mean, even if they don't care that much about chasing Amy, the original movie, I think the other message is probably the strongest. Can you say Thank something you. about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, that, I mean, I could I can talk a lot. I can talk a lot, Jim. Um, but well, please, I can, please go. And we have limited time, but we'll do it. <laughs> I mean, I think in general, um, and I think Rain Valdez says this in Disclosure, or maybe my producing partner, Alex Schmitter, says this uh-huh. just in real life. I've heard it from both of them, I think. Okay. But love, rom-coms are often propaganda for who gets to be loved. And to just like sit with that for a second of like, well, who do we see getting to have love and experience love? Mm-hmm. And you know, in my own relationship, and I say this towards the end of Chasing, Chasing Amy of, you know, being fearful of, of, of you know, coming out because I, I didn't, I, I wasn't sure if I would still be loved in that romantic way mm-hmm. um, as a result of becoming myself. And because we don't see it very often, we don't see this, this representation often of trans people getting to become fully themselves And they still get to, they still get the girl at the end of the day or get the guy or get the person at the end of the day. Right. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's, and it sends a very pointed message, I think, to, you know, trans people that, well, if you become yourself, everybody, you know, isn't going to stick around, you know, you, we won't get to experience the same kind of romantic love or familial love or community Mm -hmm. in that way. And I think it's, you know, while it wasn't necessarily intentional with Chasing Chasing Amy, if somebody who's trans, who's, you know, struggling with getting to be themselves feels like they will still have the same life, but better at the end of the day, um, mm-hmm. as a result, of getting to be themselves, like, I love that, you know, mm-hmm. and, and Riley and I are just people, we have no agenda with our marriage, other than to just be married to each other. But it, if it makes people feel good to see that, then, um, mm-hmm. I can call it a day and hang my hat up proud. Well, keep your hat on right now. <laughs> I like it's hat. not good. It, it's it's not it's not good under there. That's why the hat's on. <laughs> oh well, we all know that trick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have mine on, so I'm safe. Um, <laughs> Yours look good. I'm tired. I've been watching a lot of movies lately. My eyes. Oh, I mean, it. your hat looks good. I'm trying, good. Trying my best for an old guy. Anyway, um, what I wanted to ask you about, too, is 
your relationship with your mother in the story? Would you mind saying oh, something yeah. about that? Oh, I love my mom. I mean, uh, the most wonderful, most supportive, you know, um, somebody else who is not interested in being on camera, um, like mother, like son in that way. Um, <laughs> uh, she was very open to to being in it and having that conversation, you know, for me, because I knew I needed to, to, you know, talk to the person who helped make all of this possible with her having great taste in movies, in my opinion. Oh. Um, you know, uh, you know, I pulled the Chasing Amy DVD off of her physical media shelf. You know, it was her DVD. <laughs> what do you um, mean? <laughs> she was a fan of Kevin before I was. And so, um, mm. but to be able to have, again, this moment where, you know, I'm, I'm still loved, I'm still cared for, um, and to be able to kind of put to bed the things that I was struggling with in my, in my childhood, to kind of just like have that moment and leave it there. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to move forward was incredibly meaningful. And my mom, you know, she was a single mom for a long time before my stepdad came around. I see. And, you know, so just it was us in the beginning. And so to have mm -hmm. that moment with her and have that hug and have that tender moment um, just means everything. Oh, wow. Well, I wanted to I wanted to ask you about that. I had been kind of in my mind because for a lot of young people, the relationship with their parents are extremely problematic. And uh, yeah. I, it's it's very different when you do have support and yeah uh, which you apparently have had so that's great um well and that's not to say that everything is uh, you know been perfect in in my life but what mm -hmm. i can honestly say is that my mom has stood by me every second um and she's mm -hmm. always been open to learning and growing and doing her best to be the best parent for me and mm -hmm. so the support that i've i've had from my mom and my stepdad just means everything to me and I guess to go back to the film for a second, um, tell me a little bit about your experience of running around New Jersey shooting it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I loved it. It was so much fun to go to all of the Chasing Amy locations in New Jersey, all of the, you know, the diner owners, the shopkeepers, everybody was game. They were all like, yeah, we're used to the tours coming in. And, and oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know about that people, part. <laughs> people who make like little like uh, clerks group tours and they go to New Jersey to experience it as a group. Um, you know, Kevin Smith fans are, they go hard. And so uh, they love to go back to the locations and they were all so game to let us film in there and shoot in there. Um, and most of them looked exactly the same as when we, uh, when Chasing Amy filmed, which is wild, like that yeah. the preservation of those spaces. And so um, I could not have had a better time in Red Bank, Leonardo, uh, the Jersey Shore, all of the surrounding areas. It was wonderful. Oh, oh, great. I, that, 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 those are some of the moments I really enjoyed at the beginning of the film anyway. <laughs> and you. Um, you did some great jobs with those interviews. Um, interviews are never easy, but I guess the other thing I wanted to ask about is kind of your own background in filmmaking. You went to film school somewhere, I think in New York, maybe? Is oh, that, no, I, no, I did it all in Kansas. I did it all in Kansas. Oh, really? I, oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm a very proud University of Kansas graduate, a uh, diploma or degree or whatever is on the wall over there. Well, thank um, you, because it's always East Coast, West Coast, and nobody ever mentions anything else. <laughs> so good to know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I didn't wear being from Kansas as a badge of honor until I went other places. You know, mm. when, when you don't have any other life experience to compare it to, you think, well, anywhere else must be more interesting, but I'm so thankful to be from there and to have gone to KU because I, I got, I gained so many life skills and I gained mentorship mm -hmm. and I, and I, you know, by people like Matt Jacobson, who was a shooter uh, on our Kansas parts of the documentary, oh. uh, uh, Laura Kirk, who's an amazing actor who like took me, you know, under, under her wing, you know, it's like the, the kind of, the kind of life skills I gained at KU film school were, were mm -hmm. just completely invaluable and so I really had started just like making shorts to just try stuff out and see like okay well how do you make a movie how do I make like a little micro microcosm of a of a movie in a couple of days and yes I was just experimenting and trying out student films and often had to make those student films outside of class and so yeah um but to have just that that space to to try and to fail and to make mistakes and to sometimes be able to play those films at film festivals to go meet more people. Right. I mean, um, I, 
you know, my first year at film school was a bust because I was just waiting for permission to make a movie. I was, I was hoping somebody would be like, hey, now it's your turn, kid. Um, and that's just so not how it works. You kind of have to green light yourself. And so I learned at KU Film School how to be scrappy and to figure out how to get something done. Um, and uh, I loved it. I, I loved the whole thing. And then uh, after graduating, I was like, OK, well, what's next? I, I feel like I did everything you can reasonably do at a Midwestern film school. What what can I do next? And, uh, you know, Chasing Chasing Amy was the was a challenge to myself in that way. Well, given what you've accomplished, I guess I'm tempted to ask, what's, what will you attempt next? I mean, that, <laughs> that, was, that was like a, a, a major thing in the back of your head for years. So now yeah. there must be something else in the back of your head. Tell me. <laughs> 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 so too many things in the back of my head, let me tell you. Um, it's, uh, you know, next I want to try to do something different. You know, first first priority is connecting with audiences for Chasing Chasing Amy, being at screenings as much as I can, connecting right. with audiences, you know, spreading the word, trying to get the, the word out there for the movie. Um, I want to do, I, I feel like I'm in a similar position as when I graduated film school in, you know, all those years ago now of mm -hmm. like, okay, well, it's time to it's time to do something new and it's time to make a movie that only you can make as much as possible. Now, I, I don't think I can make more of a movie that only I can make other than Chasing Chasing Amy. But there are a lot of stories that I want to tell. And most of them, I think, narrative at this point. So That's I've got good. a script that I'm finishing up right now. And I'd love to be able to make it once this writer's strike is over. And uh, <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm really excited to just go out and, and make another independent film and and. Uh, and do something that's totally original. Um, that's that's what I hope to do next. Nothing that's based on existing IP or anything else. Just something okay. that is from the heart and hopefully makes people um, have a fun uh, movie experience. That's what I want. Okay. Well, kudos to you for that. <laughs> uh, I think we should watch our time probably. I think we're under the, as they say, under the gun. And uh, I really appreciate being able to chat with you and I, Guess you're going to be around for, if not opening night, at least closing night of this festival. Are, are you in the L.A. area? Uh, right I'll now? be in the L.A. area soon. I live in Las Vegas, so um, I'm driving up. I'll be there opening night. Um, okay. And, I will, and I'll definitely be there closing night for Chasing Chasing Amy well, to of play course, it. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, we look forward to seeing you opening night, be along with everybody else who manages to crawl in there, which is a huge group. And... Uh, Say hello to Riley for me and uh, um, the best with your film. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank All you. Right. Thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And I will definitely tell Riley hello. <laughs> You're most welcome. All right. Thank you so much. All righty. Bye. Bye. Bye.